So, here's the setup. I'm going to lie down here with the beeper hidden next to my head and sound it. My job is to try and take a photograph of the creature as it attacks. But to make that just an extra little bit tricky, give me more of a challenge, I shall be blindfolded. So really, all I can do is listen for my attacker. Right. Well, let's, let's get started. I am now the prey. Time to summon my trained attacker. It's surprisingly tense. If the creature appears, I've got nothing but my ears to warn me of its approach. It's the waiting that gets you. And this is that creature, a barn owl. Wow, that was genuinely amazing. When somebody tells you something like a barn owl can fly silently, I generally take it with a pinch of salt, but trust me, they can. I had no idea she was there until she hit the ground. Totally silent. And owls need to be. Take this tawny owl, for instance. Silent flight, as we've seen, allows an owl to creep up on its prey. But it also means that their wings can operate quietly enough that they can hear that prey over their own flapping. But to see what makes owl flight so special, we need a little experiment. Starting with this pigeon. Just watch what happens when it flies across a bed of feathers. That is turbulence in action. Is an owl attempting the same thing. There's almost no disturbance at all. But how on earth is it doing it? It turns out that owl wings have three very special features. These tiny knobbly teeth stop the front edge creating one big whirlpool of air. Then a layer of soft velvety feathers keeps that airflow close to the wing. And finally, that tattered back edge reduces turbulence as the air leaves the wing. So I thought, what if I could make an airplane wing like an owl's wing? Unfortunately, I could only find one place willing to let me have a go. An airplane graveyard. 
I've had to improvise a bit with materials and such, but that's how it is with science. And here it is. It's got everything. The egg boxes give the leading edge that knobbly profile to break up the airflow into smaller vortices. The carpet, the texture, breaks up the huge bubble of disturbed air and reduces noise. And the trailing edge is serrated, and that cuts down on noise as well. So, why don't all aeroplane wings look like this? Well, it turns out it's not that simple. The problem is one of scale. That amount of egg boxes and carpet would just slow the plane down too much. And the serrated lino would apparently get in the way of the flaps they use for braking. So it looks like the sightseers of Saint-Martin are safe for the moment. Science isn't about to spoil their fun. <laughs>